Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to discuss about authentication in gRPC. In my last couple of videos, I have discussed about a standard gRPC client-server application and then I discussed about server streaming in gRPC. I'm going to provide link to both the videos above. If you have not seen them, please go ahead and see those videos because the application that I'm going to work on is a continuation of the project I created in those videos. So to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the authentication for the server application. Now, this was the server that I created in last couple of videos, and I had two gRPC services exposed. One is the population by state, and the second one is client count. Now, what I'm going to do is, so for the authentication, I'm going to use JWT because decrypting a JWT authentication is pretty straightforward. Also, I have done a video on JWT where I created a JWT server. I'm going to provide the link above. So I'm going to use the same existing server for the authentication purpose. So this is the JWT authentication service which is running. So I'm going to use the same service for getting an auth token. And once I get the auth token, I'm going to use that auth token in the client application of gRPC and send it to this gRPC server. And then in this gRPC server, I'll have an authentication handler, which is going to take the token, decrypt the token, and let it pass through. So to do that, first what I'm going to do is, I'm going to install the JWT authentication NuGet package in this project. So I'll go to the NuGet package manager, and I'm going to search for the JWT bearer NuGet package. And here is the first one. And I'm going to install the 3.0 because my current version of the .NET framework for this server project is .NET framework 3.0. But if you are running on 3.1, then you can install the later versions. So once the package is installed, the next thing I'm going to do is go into the startup and in the startup in the configure services after I configured gRPC I'm going to add the authentication so I'm going to do add services dot add authentication and then for the authentication So here I'm going to set up the JWT bearer authentication scheme. So I'm going to say that the default authenticate scheme is going to be JWT bearer defaults dot and I'll add the namespace Microsoft dot ASP.NET code dot authentication dot JWT bearer. And then from here, I'm going to use the authentication scheme for the JWT defaults. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also set up the default challenge scheme. And for default challenge scheme also, I'm going to use the authentication scheme from JWT bearer defaults. So once these two are configured, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the JWT bearer. So I'm going to do dot JWT bearer and then require HTTPS metadata is false the needed safe token is true And then we'll set up the validation parameter. I'm just going to add the namespaces in the using. Let me reduce this a little bit. Okay. And then for the token parameters, I'm going to have validate issuer signing key, which is going to be true. And then issuer signing key. And 
and I'm going to use the symmetric security key and for the key I'm going to pass the exact key which is available in the auth demo so that you know it could decrypt and for the key we are using a value from app.config and this is the value so I'm just going to go back to my code here add this thing and then copy this key from here and paste it in the token key let me add the namespace for system.txt okay now that I have the key I can pass the key here and then I don't want to validate the issuer so I'm going to set it as false for this example I also don't want the audience validation okay so once I do that, now my JWT authentication is configured. Next thing to do is I also have to do the use authentication and use authorization. So here I'm going to do okay. So once these two are done, my authentication pipeline is configured and I'm using JWT authentication. Now next thing I'm going to do is, this is my service, this is my JWT service. If you have seen my last video, this is the service which returns a stream of server data. So now I'm going to set up the authorized attribute here so that this method is authenticated. Let's go ahead and do authorize. I'll have to add the authorization namespace. Okay, so now this particular class is authorized. Now the other thing I'll do is just to make sure that from the JWT token, the identity is extracted properly. I'm going to print out the name of the user. So for that, what I'll do is console dot right line. And inside of right line, I'm going to take the context, the context of the gRPC and then from the context I'll get the HTTP context and from the HTTP context I can get the user identity and from that I'm going to print out the name. So this is going to tell me if the JWT token is appropriately decrypted or not. So now my server setup is done. Next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to set up the client. Now for client, let's go here. There are two ways we can set up the client. The first way is through the header and the header can be passed to the get client count method. That's one way. And the second way is to actually set it up through channel. First, let's try with the header. So for header, what I'm going to do is here, let me create headers. And then I'm going to add to the header the key as authorization. And for the value, I'm going to add bearer and the token. For the time being, I'm just going to pass a fake token just to demonstrate that the service is going to now return a 401 and then after I have these what I'm going to do is here after the cancellation token I can pass the headers so I can say headers is headers so once I have that now let's go and start the server let me disable any Breakpoint, uh, I don't have any, so good. So let me start the server. So I have to add authorization here. Okay, let me start the 
server. So the gRPC server is up and running and we can see that both the gRPC method are configured and one is unary, second one is server streaming and we discussed about both of these in details in the last couple of videos. Okay, after the server is started, now I'm going to go and start the client. So I'm just going to start the client and in the client, we can see that it has got a 401 response status, which is expected. Okay, so now it's time to pass a valid token. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to call the authenticate method with the test one as username and password as password one. And I have discussed in detail about the JWT authentication in my video. I'll provide the link again above. You can look into it. So if I send this request, this will generate a new JWT token. I'm just going to copy this token and I'm going to go to the client and in the token, I'm going to paste this. So once I do that, I'll run the application again. And once I run, you can see that it is printing the number and I'm not getting any 401 as expected. And after five seconds, I sent a cancellation token, so the server will stop the stream. This is expected. Now, if I go back to the server, and if I go up, because this is all the right messages, before that, I should be able to see, so here I can see that test one is printed out, which is the name of the identity. If you remember, I'm passing test one as the username. And we can see that the test one is printed as the username. Maybe I'll update the server a little bit so that it's more clear what it is printing. So I'll go back to the method here and the print statement, I can just say, So let me demonstrate that again. I'm going to run this. I'll go back to the client and run the client. And then I'll go back to the server. Let it finish running. And then I'll go up and I can see that username from JWD token is test one. So this is working as expected. Now let's change the client implementation. And this time, instead of passing the JWT token as a part of the method call, which is sometime annoying because, you know, for if you have multiple method calls, you have to copy paste this code around. So the other option is setting up the token at the channel level. So to do that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just comment this code out because we are not going to use the headers anymore. And here I'm going to come and delete the header. Okay. So what I'm going to do is before I declare the channel, I'm going to start here and declare the credential. So I'll say our credentials equal to call credentials dot from interceptor. And then here I can pass the context and the metadata. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the authorization token to the metadata. So metadata dot add and just like here, I'm going to add the authorization token. And then after the token is added, I'm just going to return a task dot complete. Okay. So once I do that, my credentials are ready. And now when I create a channel for the channel, the second parameter is gRPC channel option. So I can pass in the gRPC channel options, I can pass the credentials that I created earlier. So here I can say, so here I can say credentials equal to 
channel credentials dot create and in the create we are going to have a new of SSL credentials and then the credentials object that we created earlier. So once we do that now we are setting up the token at the channel level and not at the individual call level. So once I do that, I don't have to make any change in the server because this is just a change in how we can set up the authentication token on the client side. So now I'm going to run this. And once I run, I can see it is working as expected. And also if I go back to server, I should be able to see the same printout method as before with the username. So we can see here that the username from JWB token is test1. So this is all I had to cover today. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have been getting value from my channel, please subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed to it. Thank you so much.